Hello, and welcome to Greece Travel Guide. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the less well-known Greek islands called the Morgos. By the end of the video, you should have enough information to decide if it's a destination worth putting on your holiday wish list. So keep watching, and let us know in the comments if you have any questions. If you haven't heard of a Morgos before, let's first get a sense of where it is, before moving on to how to get there, and then, more importantly, what the island has to offer you as a visitor. Amorgos is the easternmost island of the Cyclades, a group of islands set right in the middle of Greece. Due to its mountainous terrain, Amorgos doesn't have its own airport, so the only way to get there is by ferry. We'll cover travel options in more detail later in the video. The island itself is quite small, measuring 30 kilometers in length, but only 10 kilometers across at its widest point. The road network is minimal, you can drive from one end of the island to the other in not much over an hour. Amorgos has two ports, Igali and Katapola, which are also the main tourist resorts on the island. Igali is located on the northwestern coastline, nestled into a large west-facing bay. Katapola is further southwest and more centrally located, making it perhaps the more convenient location to use as a base for your stay. Now let's cover how you can reach Amorgos. For international travellers arriving into Athens, a regular ferry service is available from Piraeus to both Igali and Katapola, in both cases taking either six and a half hours by high-speed ferry, or between eight and nine hours on a conventional ferry, depending on the route. If you don't fancy spending that long on a boat, the alternative is to fly to the neighbouring island of Naxos and catch a direct ferry from there. Flights run daily, take around 50 minutes, and cost between 60 and 100 euros depending on the airline and availability. From Naxos, you can catch a fast ferry taking just over an hour, or a slower vehicle ferry taking between two and three hours, again arriving at either Igali or Katapola, depending on the route that you choose. We visited Amorgos in June 2019. Although we only stayed five nights, it felt like a good amount of time to see much of what the island has to offer. You could easily spend a week here, but any longer and you may be better off spending the extra time exploring a different island to get the most out of your time in Greece. For our visit, we split our time between Igali and Katapola, arriving on a very late ferry from Naxos, having flown from the UK to Mykonos earlier the same day, then taking a short ferry from Mykonos to Naxos that we've used many times before. In terms of accommodation, both resorts offer a small but good selection of places to stay. In Igali, we spent two nights at the Aperia Hotel, just a short walk from the harbour, and had a fantastic stay. Breakfasts were delicious, and the small pool was a welcome addition after a long day's walking. The staff were also extremely friendly, even meeting us at the port at 3am after our ferry was late arriving. During our time at the northern end of the island, we spent half a day hiking from our accommodation to Theologos Church, close to the northeastern coastline, travelling back via some unmarked trails to the village of Igali. The next day was a full day's hike from Igali to Hora via the impressive Panaias Hosoviotisas Monastery, one of the main tourist attractions on the island. This hike is more commonly started from either Katapola or Hora, finishing in Igali, but it's just as good in either direction. From Hora, we caught the afternoon bus service back to Igali. We spent the remaining three nights of our trip in Katapola, based at the even more impressive Amorgion Hotel. Its location is set quite a way back from the resort centre, so the only slight downside is the 15 minute walk in and out of town, but the trade-offs are the excellent views across the bay and a much more spacious hotel with a wonderful large pool. In Katapola, we hired a car for the day and used it to explore the southern half of the island. Our route took us through several small villages, stopping first at Vruzzi for the 50 minute hike to Arcasini, ruins of an ancient city and castle, built on a narrow cliff top with amazing views over the south side of the island. It isn't a difficult hike, but due to the remote setting we advise taking plenty of water and allowing a good couple of hours for the visit. We then proceeded to the southwesternmost tip of the island, to a beach called Kalo Tartissa. It's a very quiet spot, at least in early June, but there is a small beach canteen serving basic snacks and drinks, plus you can swim in the shallow waters although getting in and out is a bit of a challenge as it's pretty rocky near the shoreline. To sum up then, Amorgos is a very pretty, quiet and traditional island 
unspoiled by mass tourism. If you're looking for an authentic Greek experience, it's definitely a good place to visit, and we thoroughly enjoyed our time there. The island is especially popular with hikers due to its rugged and hilly terrain, offering some spectacular walks. In particular, the main 20km hike that we did across the island from Agali to Katapala, which is highly recommended. Check out the links in the description below for some other suggested walking routes you can try. Of the two resorts, we preferred Katapala for its more central location, close to Hora and the stunning monastery. If you don't have a car, there is a daily bus service that runs between the resorts, stopping at Hora and the monastery along the way. Be warned though that accessing the monastery still requires climbing over 100 metres of stone steps, therefore is not particularly accessible for anyone with mobility issues or small children. Katapala also seemed to have more of a resort feel and perhaps a better selection of accommodation and restaurants, though we've been told that it's actually Agali is the more popular destination, so your mileage may vary. The best thing to do is visit both if you can and make your own mind up which one you prefer. As always, you can find out more about Amorgos and all the other Greek islands we've visited on our website, greecetravelguide.co.uk. We do our best to respond to all questions in the comments section below, including suggestions for future videos. So if you have any ideas for somewhere you'd like to know more about, please let us know. We hope you've enjoyed learning about Amorgos and look forward to welcoming you back in a future video soon.